We're entering another election cycle, and historically, the incumbent party plays defense in California, a typically Democratic state to begin with. Republicans are even more vulnerable than they were last year. There are all types of ways to say words, and that's one of them. (laughs) Alex Miller joins us tonight. Uh, California, it's turned more liberal throughout the last three decades or so, and Republicans do hold on to a few seats that they have. Uh, Here's a weird thing. They brought in Steve Bannon to unite the party there, but they're pretty moderate. Yeah, it was kind of an interesting choice because he te- California Republicans tend to be a little bit more moderate on these issues, especially like immigration. Yeah. So he kind of steered away from those kind of hot button topics in his speech, but he had a theme throughout his entire speech, which was roll up your sleeves and get to work. Steve Bannon turning his focus to California Republicans at their party convention in Anaheim. His goal, rally the tiny state party together to grow the base and hold on to seven vulnerable districts. The problem is, the Republican Party is not exactly popular in California. They've got less than 26% of registered voters. They still haven't won a statewide election since 2006. Democrats hold super majorities at the state level. And Hillary Clinton beat Donald Trump in the state by more than four. Four million votes. Few state and federal officials went to the speech, but Bannon wasted no time making sure his speech would be heard by the masses. He criticized former President Bush. President Bush, to me, embarrassed himself. Speechwriter wrote a highfalutin speech. It's clear he didn't understand anything he was talking about, just like it was when he was president of the United States. And offered minimal praise of Arizona Senator John McCain. Both men, who at one time were the party's nominee, won more votes in California than President Trump. President George H.W. Bush was the last candidate to win the state. Still, President Trump boasts a 70% approval rating amongst Republicans in California, so Bannon stuck mostly to economic nationalism to bridge the anti-Trump side of the party, saying, quote, economic nationalism is not not about your race, your color, your gender, your religion, your ethnicity, your sexual preference. It's about one thing. Are you a citizen of the United States of America? As a citizen, you should have a preference for jobs and economic opportunities. Economic nationalism is not what's going to drive us apart. It's what's going to bind us together. And so that's one of his go-tos there, right, to talk about um, immigration, things like that. How did it go over? Um, it, he, he steered clear a little bit of it, but um, I spoke with a political science professor out of a school in California um, about why the state party might have chosen to bring in such a divisive figure uh, to an already small and very divided party. Why do you think that Steve Bannon chose to go to California? I think Steve Bannon sees this as an opportunity to be a provocateur, to come in and, but also to come in and hopefully rally uh, Republicans here who, you know, feel like they don't have a lot of influence, particularly at the state and national level. Within the the Republican Party in California, it's pretty divided about whether uh, they support Trump or whether they don't support this Trump-Bannon agenda. Do you think that this is the right strategy? For him to come in there? Yeah, it depends because Republicans are very unhappy and actually a lot of Republicans have switched their registration to independent because they're unhappy with the um, Bannon-Trump agenda. And so in many ways it's a rally the base kind of approach and I think Bannon's presence here really was focused on a particular component of the Republican Party that supports the Trump-Bannon agenda. And so, but on the other hand, they, they're alienating the more moderate Republicans, many of whom have already become independents. And actually, if you look at the data, um, both part, both the Democrats and Republicans have lost, um, or people who, there are more people who are becoming independent. But it's more so on the Republican side than the Democratic side. There are a number of House districts that are notoriously Republican districts that went for Hillary Clinton uh, last year. What do Republicans yes. need to do in 2018 to make sure that they can keep those seats? Well, I think they're torn because some of them are trying to distance themselves from Trump, but others are, you know, going back and forth. So, you know, I think you've seen some say, oh, on one, you know, some point in time they don't support legislation like the uh, ACA legislation, but then um, they'll turn around and support, uh, you know, the tax legislation. So I think Republicans here aren't sure really how to manage the situation. You know, people look at California as a bellwether 
um, in the sense that, you know, if you look at California in the late 90s, you know, we were still somewhat Republican, and then we shifted to being uh, more Democratic. Keep an eye on California because um, if the uh, Democrats are successful in turning over some of these districts next year, um, that's going to be critical to the Republican majority, particularly in the House. So he has railed against uh, California as being a sanctuary state. He says, you've not only had sanctuary cities, it's now a sanctuary state. How did that go over? Because they're pretty nuanced in California, even in the Republican Party on immigration. They are. They are. So uh, California Republicans are not necessarily supportive of sanctuary states, but they are supportive of a nuanced approach to it. So California has the most rapidly changing de demographics in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and so therefore, their Republicans kind of have to get on board with this. And basically what this professor told me is that they have this approach that we still think we need a border security wall. They think they need um, other types of border security. But they think there's room for DACA-like provisions and support for the younger people in their own state that have come here as children. Because they're probably more likely to know to represent people who would fall under those programs. Exactly.